much, Robin. So um, welcome, everybody. I am really happy to be here today. Um, as Robin said, my name is Patty Domsky from Toronto Public Library. I work in children's services, supporting system-wide programs and initiatives. Um, I'm excited to share online resources today. Early literacy is a topic that I'm very passionate about, so I am always happy to share information about that. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing online resources uh, that are available uh, not only at the library, but also outside of the library, which support children in early literacy development, including our early years readers. Our services help to build a love of reading and learning and support student success. So the emphasis of this workshop is on JK to grade two, but it will of course include some resources that are suitable for all the way up to grade six. And um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to save the demos for the end. So I will allow time at the end and uh, sort of show you some of the resources only because I didn't want a lot of, there was so much back and forth, I didn't want to do that. So you can, um, I'll also leave time at the end for questions and please feel free to jump in with the questions at any time. And Robin's going to kind of help me with this because I'm, I'm solo today <laughs> for this presentation. So, oh dear. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> So Toronto Public Library, this workshop is informed by Toronto Public Library's children's services vision and mission of children's services. Our children's services vision is that Toronto Public Library be recognized as a leader in supporting the development of happy, confident and successful kids by providing solid foundations to support them and their families as they transition from early childhood to the teenage years. Our mission is to instill a lifelong love of reading and learning. We want to empower parents and connect families. And we also want to foster a sense of belonging for kids and families. And we also celebrate each child's uniqueness. We know that they all children develop differently and at different paces, and we recognize that. Toronto Public Library serves uh, children from birth to 12 years of age. We offer a suite of services and programs for children from birth to five years and also for the middle years, which is ages six to 12. Um, so I wanted to start, before I start talking about our online resources, I wanted to provide a quick update because this is always changing but on our current level of uh, in-branch services, because of course the services that we provide in the library support all children and families for early literacy. So starting this past Monday, June 7th, and until the end of step one of the province's three-step roadmap, Toronto Public Library is providing the following levels of service. You can see my uh, chart here, we, you're able to pick up holds, although it's contactless, so you would have to wait in line and one person is served at a time. You can return library materials at uh, most library drop boxes. You are now able to print, copy, and scan, and you can also use a computer in the library. And of course, our washrooms are also available. So at this time, you won't be able to register for a library card, so a physical library card. Um, and most of the, the areas that are blocked off are areas such as where you would uh, study, and you're also not able to browse library materials. And as well, um, our sort of play areas that are educational, such as um, our kids stops, and kids discovery zones and also our youth hubs are not available at this time as well. And of course, masks must be worn at all times when you visit our branches. Um, libraries continue to be closed on Sundays. Uh, we're hoping to resume Sunday service at, uh, later this year. One of our really popular services uh, that we are still able to do is our grab and go bags. So this is, these are bags of carefully curated materials. Um, and these are great, especially for families and kids. Um, they have a variety of topics and themes. 
They've been really popular. And it's kind of a way of browsing in a sense, uh, because you're not able to browse the shelves, of course, on your own. So um, different branches offer different themes. Uh, and for kids, there's things like crafts, magic, and space. And I just have a couple of pictures here of uh, some great examples of the kind of things that we offer. You can see there's a Curious George bag right here, themed um, and sport themed bags. So that's th these kind of things are a great benefit to early readers, especially just taking home a bag of books. It's just a very exciting thing for them. So um, I talked about uh, library card registration is not available at this, this time. That's for full access library cards. Um, full access allows you all of Toronto Public Library's online services and resources at Toronto Public Library. You can also borrow books, DVDs, music, and more sort of physical materials at the library. Um, right now, you can get a, well, you can't get one now, but you have to, uh, the card is free if you live in Toronto, if you work, if you go to school, or if you own property in Toronto, it is free. Um, so even though this card isn't available to get if you don't have one, there are many families in Toronto who still have this card and can take advantage of it. So they can access their online resources and services, as well as place holds on physical items in the branches. And if a library card is expired, families can still extend um, their card. They, all they need to do is to go online. Now, if you don't have a library card, not to worry, we have our digital access card. So uh, this uh, provides access to our digital resources and services while in-person library card registration is on pause. So this card is available for Toronto residents ages 13 and up who don't have a library card. And again, this is a free service. And uh, again, it's just for Toronto residents. So just keep that in mind. But it provides you with access to ebooks and e audiobooks, digital video and music, digital magazines, digital newspapers, research databases, e learning resources, uh, reserve and computer services, online printing. So you can sign up for that um, at tpl.ca register. We, when we're able to offer in-person library card registration, families can go to their local branch to change their digital access card to a full access card to take advantage of all of, of uh, our physical collections. So that's just like a quick overview of the kind of services that are available for us right now in Toronto uh, during step one. <clears throat> but what I want to do now is look a little bit more closely at programs, resources, and services available to support your families and their early years readers. Um, all of our resources, services, and programs are grounded in the most recent uh, early childhood development and, and uh, brain theory. So this is why I'm going to talk a little bit about this is brain development. I don't know, is there a little square blocking part of the screen or is everybody okay? I'm just wondering where my little uh, participant screen is. It's not blocking anything? No, nope, it looks We're good. good. Okay, yep. good, all right. So before I talk any more about early literacy and learning, I wanna talk about brain development in general because once you understand um, a bit about early brain development, and a lot of you already know this, but it's always good to have a reminder but you're better able to understand how children learn and then you'll be better able to help your clients and your customers as well. So at birth, um, and I always like throwing this question out there, what percentage of a baby's brain is developed? And anybody's attended or ready for reading for our TPL staff, they should know the answer. I don't know if there's anything in the chat or if anybody's <laughs> answering that one. Nothing so far. Does anybody have any guesses? Maybe 70%. Okay, there's one guess. Any other guesses? Someone's saying, uh, Sam is saying 25% developed and Jennifer is saying 55. Okay, Sam, you got it. <laughs> I think you went to our training. <laughs> but that's absolutely right. 
So, and a lot of people don't realize this, only 25% of a, of a baby's brain is developed when they're born. So that leaves another, do the math. That's, come on, somebody do the math quickly. <laughs> That's even math I can do, so. <laughs> Okay, Courtney helped. She said 75. <laughs> Good job, Courtney. Yes. So that's 75% of a, the brain that isn't developed. So who do you think develops that brain? <laughs> who helps? Parents and caregivers do all that. So brains are not born. They're built over time based upon experiences. So every time a parent or caregiver talks, sings, plays, reads, cuddles with a baby, they are developing that brain. And it's the more of that kind of uh, stimulation, the talk, sing, play, read, and cuddling they get, the faster the brain growth is. So the brain develops the fastest in the first three years of life. So that's from birth to three years of age. Um, uh, the brain reaches 80% of its adult volume. And by the time they're five, it's reached 90% of its adult volume. So every time, um, a baby is getting this kind of stimulation, important neural connections are being made. And I, I talk about these activities because they're very simple for people to do. They don't cost anything and it can make a world of difference for a child because these simple activities, um, they are, because they're building these neuro, crucial neural connections, it'll, they determine how clever, creative, and imaginative that a child will be. So, and again, even if I, I know sometimes we have adults who may struggle with reading and that's okay because then they can still talk to their baby. They can still sing to their babies. So it's just sort of something I want you to keep in mind um, that can be helpful for your clients and your customers. So we know reading is really essential to school success. Parents can help children learn language and other literacy skills with simple activities, which I'm going to talk about very shortly. They're easy to make uh, part of their everyday routine. Children who start kindergarten with good pre-reading skills are ready to learn and they're ready to um, read. And studies have confirmed this over and over again. So a child's reading success in kindergarten and beyond begins with positive language and literacy experiences from the time that they're infants. So if children develop pre-reading skills before they start kindergarten, they can focus on learning to read when they get to school. And of course, we know that kids um, learn to read in the early years and in the early grades. And then by about grade four, they need to read to learn. And so if that learning to read has been a struggle or has, then that's going to make the reading to learn a struggle as well. So um, intervention early on is good, but it's never too late to be doing these kind of interactive activities with children. So now that you have this kind of background information, you can better understand how our services, programs and resources promote and support um, the important role that parents and caregivers play in getting children ready for reading and learning. So the basis of all our programs is kind of getting that message across that a parent or caregiver is a child's first and best teacher. And that's because they're with their kids the most. Um, Jim Trelease, who uh, has his book, uh, Read Aloud Handbook, there's many editions of that one, estimates, and it's this is in the US, but it's probably about the same in Canada and, and under normal circumstances as well, not during a pandemic, but kids will generally spend 900 hours in school. And so the rest of the time, and that's in a year, the rest of the time is 7,800 hours outside of school. So you can see which teacher has the greater influence. That's a lot of time. Um, so we really encourage um, parents to be and caregivers to give them a lifelong advantage if they start to develop a love for books and reading and to be doing activities with their child. They know best how their child learns as well and they can be flexible in terms of when they decide to do these activities. And children learn best by real live interactions with loving, caring parents and caregivers. Um, and you know what, I'm just going to talk just a tiny bit about screen time. I know during a pandemic is not the time to be worried about it, 
But something to keep in mind is, um, is to keep screen time to a minimum. Uh, the Canadian Pediatric Society recommends for uh, kids from birth to two years, they shouldn't have any. And from two to five years, uh, one hour or less. And a parent should be actively involved during that time. Now, people, you know, don't worry. We know kids are getting a lot more screen time right now. But I think it's just good to have an understanding of, of trying to minimize screen time when they can, because that takes away from that um, learning that goes on. Because kids learn best when they're interacting in real life with people um, and loving, caring people in their lives. So I want to also talk about our TPL collections. Um, they're carefully chosen for children, parents, and caregivers, as well as educators. They reflect the unique needs and development stages of children. And we offer a balanced collection uh, with as wide a range of viewpoints and experiences as possible in a variety of different formats. And our collections support literacy. They encourage a love of reading. They support school success, lifelong learning, and also support personal development. And they also respond to diversity and they meet the unique developmental needs of kids. And I've already talked about just that we, we recognize that um, kids develop differently and have uh, different needs. Another thing that you may not be aware of is um, our collections, our children's collections, are arranged within a reading ladder arrangement. Um, and these are the stages of reading development. So you might be wondering, um, this might, you might be wondering, what is, what is with all of these spine labels? I don't have a children's book with me today, but you may wonder sometimes, what does that label mean? Well, here it is. I'm uh, providing the answer to that. So. Our reading ladder starts with J Pit, which are picture books. And these are generally, and remember, these are suggestions and guidelines. These, uh, not every child fits neatly into these categories. So please keep that in mind as I talk about them. But picture books are generally for birth to five years of age. They usually have about 32 pages. They have obviously pictures um, and they can include word lists, alphabet counting, as well as board books. Now. Uh, Board books are currently not available at this time during the pandemic, just so you know, but there are um, resources on our website that can point you to books for younger readers. It just won't be board books that people can borrow. The next stage in the latter is JBR, which are beginner readers, which are aimed at six to seven years of age or grades senior kindergarten to grades one and two. They support new readers with repeated vocabulary and rhyming. And there's lots of white space and lots of illustrations in these books. The next rung of the ladder is JER, which is easy to read. And these are for grades seven, sorry, seven years and up, and also <clears throat> grades two to three. So easy to read book. These are first chapter books. They will have more white space than their older chapter books, and they will also have, um, they still have quite a few illustrations. So some examples of those would be Alvin Ho, Ramona, Captain Underpants, Encyclopedia Brown. And then we have advanced picture books, J.A. Pip, and this is for seven years and up, or grades two and up, and that's all the way up to adult, really. These are picture books for older kids. They have a more sophisticated story and subject matter, and they require a, a a longer attention span, as well as more developed comprehension skills. So there's quite a variety in that collection. Um, an example is the true story of the three little pigs. I think uh, a lot of you may be familiar with it. It's one of my favorites. But to read that book, you need to have an understanding of the original three little pigs story. And then we have uh, JF, which is older fiction, nine to 12 years of age, approximately for grades four to six. They look very much like their adult counterpart fiction. They have uh, more advanced vocabulary and smaller text than our early readers do, and they have fewer illustrations. And we also have graphic novels, um, and all of those can be found in our J fiction area, even if it's meant for a younger audience. Right now, at this time, they're still found in the J fiction area. So I'm pointing you to this and explaining it because I think it's very useful for 
your clients and customers to know because it helps give them a starting point or a guideline when kids and families come in and try to find a good book. And I don't want you to forget, some kids just aren't interested in reading fiction and that's fine. There is amazing nonfiction books at, our, at the library and they are geared for all ages from kindergarten to grade six and kids can read about any topic that they're interested in, UFOs, trucks is a very popular one, um, all kinds of things. And I've just got some samples on the screen. And nonfiction graphic books can also be found in this collection. And something else I want you to remember is we have materials in many different languages. I love this example of Brown Bear, Brown Bear. I think I'll, most of us know this one and it's available in a number of different languages. And one thing we do encourage, especially for people who are new to Canada, is to speak, read, sing, play, write, do all of these activities with your child in the language that they're most comfortable with and that they feel the best. Because of course, they're still developing all of those important literacy skills. So now we're getting on to the <laughs> online stuff, resources, but I think that's, I think you need to have that background information as well because it supports all of these things. So our Ready for Reading website um, is tremendous. This is one of the ones that I do want to show you at the end of this. Ready for Reading, it's a suite of programs, services, and resources that support early literacy skills. This website is aimed at the parents and educators. It provides tips, resources for parents with children birth to five years of age, and it includes easy everyday activities to do with their child to help them develop those important pre-reading skills. You do not need to take advantage of, uh, I mean, excuse me, you do not need a library card to take advantage of this or any other information that appears on our website, uh, which, which is amazing. And um, I invite you to explore this one because there is a lot of information, as well as activities that parents and caregivers can do with their child. There's also a lot of really good book recommendations. And there's also, it points to our um, YouTube videos, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Ready for reading. Um, what we try to promote in our programs is getting parents and caregivers to do these five activities or practices with their kids. These activities help support that brain development that I talked about earlier, and they also help develop important pre-literacy, pre-reading skills for kids. They're fun activities, and again, these are things they don't cost anything, and it, it's easy to do at any time of the day, even if a parent uh, and a family is out grocery shopping, just talking about what you're buying, what you're going to make, even if, a, if a, a parent has to make a meal, they can talk about what, you know, I'm cutting up the avocado, I'm going to make some, I don't know, guacamole, not that that you should have that and guacamole and chips for dinner, that's not very healthy, but you get the idea. <laughs> talk about what you're doing. Um, and reading, of course, you can take out books from the library. And of course, we've got tons of e-resources that I'll get to later on too, as well for kids, if you're not able to get to the library. And the main idea is have fun with these activities. Don't push the child, um, but do them every day and you'll find that your child wants to do them again and again. Another great resource I wanna point you to is our Growing a Reader blog. Um, this most recent one ha has funny books, and I think we could all use a lot of funny books these days. So, and Arnie the Donut, I don't know if you've never read that, I highly recommend it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, so, the Growing a Reader blog also provides not only suggested reads, but a lot of great suggestions for parents, caregivers, and educators on how to build a love of reading and how to develop early literacy skill. And we have what's called search spotlights. This is an easy way to find materials in all formats. So not just in print, but also um, digital resources for specific holidays or events. So I just captured the, the most recent ones that I could find. So 
We have Father's Day coming up. So all a person would have to do is just type in Father's Day in the search box. And then um, this comes up and you click on it and then you get a list of Father's Day books for kids. So fiction, nonfiction, and again, all formats. So it includes eBooks when we do have them available in those kind of formats or audio books. So that saves a lot of time uh, for people and it's very quick and easy to use. We have other holidays, we have Passover, Halloween, April Fools, Kwanzaa, we have all kinds of, and we're slowly adding more. And then our digital resources. And if this is uh, what I wanna show you at the end of this workshop too, is um, we have Overdrive, Libby, Canopy, Hoopla, Kids, and Cantook or Cantook Station Jeunesse. I don't say that very well, I fully admit it. Um, so Overdrive is a great way for kids to access thousands of great titles and book recommendations. You can download it to your device or to your computer. It's amazing collection of eBooks as well as educational videos. And it includes things like read-alongs with audio and books in sign language and a lot more. It's, it's quite amazing how much information is in there. Canopy Kids, um, customers can access educational videos. So things like Sesame Street and Franklin and Friends uh, that may help students and families connect with um, you know, these kind of materials in a different way. And we also have Hoopla Kids Mode. So you can browse kid-friendly music and videos and comics. And as well, um, Ken Took is uh, French language eBooks for kids of all ages. So these are all free um, with a library card. There's no late fees and the items automatically return when they're due. So you don't have to worry about returning them on time. Although at this time we, we don't have uh, overdue fines for physical materials either. But, and so for some of these, you may have to um, provide just your library card number and some, some other ones you may have to provide an email address and uh, create, create an account for it, but pretty straightforward. Novelist, um, this is a great way to find reading suggestions for kids. It's a great, great resource. It helps promote that joy of reading because kids can find read-alikes, books by grade, books by genres. If there's just so much in there. Um, and it's also, whoops, can you still see my screen? Okay, <laughs> I, I hit something and I thought, ah, my PowerPoint disappeared. Good. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So, and you can access this again, like all of these other tools that I've been uh, suggesting, you can access this through our main website. Um, there's just so much to cover and I can't possibly tell you too much about them. Um, so even the ones that I'm not able to demonstrate at the end, I do really recommend that you try to explore all of these on your own. Um, and, and as well, our website does provide information. We often do blogs, uh, for instance, you know, homework help, brain fuse. This is a great resource online tutors daily from 2 to 11 um, p.m. It includes practice tests, writing, help, skills building, and more. The tutors provide support through chat and screen sharing instructions. And um, it, it's really a wonderful resource. You can register for an account or you can just log on as a guest as well. But of course, if you register for an account, you get a little bit more um, services such as saving your last session kind of thing, what you were working on before. Britannica Library Kids, I love this site because it provides just very concise, simple information on different topics. Um, it's trusted information that is really useful for research projects. Students can explore art articles, biographies, images, videos, Canadian focused content. Um, it's laid out very nicely, and again, it's just sort of a very quick, um, brief outline of certain topics, but I, I, I find it very, very useful. And then our TPL Kids website, I really want to show you this one when we're done. Um, it looks a little bit different now because the Summer Wonder has taken over, and I'll talk about Summer Wonder in a few minutes. But it's a website, so whereas Ready for Reading is aimed towards the parents, TPL Kids is aimed at the kids. 
So it's a website where kids can post um, on the Wonder Wall. They can take part in polls. They can read or share a joke. I really like the jokes on this website, actually. Um, they um, can Patty, enjoy. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. We're, we're only able to see the slide for reading suggestions, novelists, K to eight. Are we supposed to be seeing another? Oh, slide? yes. Okay. okay. So you may, you may have to just reshare. I wonder if, I wonder oh, if- Oh, resume maybe, share. Okay. Uh, there we go. And oh, then- Oh, sorry about that, everybody. No, that's okay. I think, I think maybe when you hit a button, um, maybe that's something that had happened. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, great. All right. So- okay, thanks, um, everybody. And, and just to make a quick note that we have 20 minutes left, just in terms of- Are you of time serious? Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know it's going fast. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. But you will have the PowerPoint available too. So with all this information. So, okay. So novelist. So brain fuse I talked about and Britannica TPL kids website. And you're seeing all this now, right? Okay. So we also have focus book lists um, on this site. Uh, for kids ages 6 to 12 on a variety of subjects. This is just an example, disability, read up on it, Black Lives Matter, books for kids, read Indigenous, of course, because it's June, and reading with pride. Um, and again, because it's June, so it's Pride Month and it's also uh, National Indigenous History Month. So, um, but lots of reading suggestions uh, based on genres of books or the top five for the month. And we have a blog uh, on TPL Kids, so kids are, are welcome to check it out. It has book suggestions as well as some upcoming programs that are going on. And one of those programs, of course, is Summer Wonder. Um, Wonder Wall, this is sort of where you can find out things like who invented video games, why are pepper spicy, what's the temperature of a black hole? So um, you can check this out if you want to know the answer. You can go to the website yourself. And as I mentioned, Summer Wonder, it's, it's a set of programs for all school age children and families at Toronto Public Library. Summer Wonder runs from June 14th to September 4th. And it's uh, part of Summer Wonder is also the TD Summer Reading Club, which many of you will be familiar with, of course. It's part of Summer Wonder and it has a website that has all kinds of information on it and lots of sort of literacy supports as does the Summer Wonder website. Um, Summer Wonder and the after, uh, excuse me, the TD Summer Reading Club offer families many exciting ways to keep kids reading and learning all summer and help to avoid that summer slide. So in a typical year, we do see um, some kids sort of lose some of what they've learned over the year. Now, of course, I think there's gonna be a pandemic slide or we know that already, so but um, it does help address those issues um, by having a lot of fun, but educational uh, supports in all of our programs. So um, I won't go into too much detail because this isn't a summer wonder <laughs> training, but we've got a lot of exciting programs available online, all these different topics. We have arts and performances, author visits. There's going to be camps and workshops, French programs, and a lot of emphasis, of course, on STEM. We have a mini reading challenge uh, that kind of goes along with Toronto Public Library's reading challenge, which invites families to read widely and discover new books. You can read or listen to 12 books in 12 categories from January to, to December to complete the 2021 reading challenge. And that's kind of a fun thing that families can do. Um, and we created in 2020 the mini reading challenge. So read a book that was published before you were born, read a book that won an award, uh, read a book that your friend liked. So it's a fun way to get kids reading and families. New to Canada, I really encourage you um, to check this site out. It uh, helps newcomers to Canada. We know that families new to Canada, especially now, may feel really isolated during these times. So it's helpful for you to know. I mentioned we have books and uh, movies and other materials in 40 different languages. We also provide library um, information in all of these languages. And we're also able to connect families with settlement workers 
ESL classes and citizenship test information and more. There's also a new to Canada blog written by librarians that provides information and resources available from the library around Toronto to new residents of Canada. Digital archive, we throw this one in here because we know building community with families is an important part of the work that we do, just keeping tabs on the time. Um, it provides access to historical photos and maps and books, and it might be a fun exercise for kids and families to look up information about their neighborhood. So they learn about the history and connect with the building and events that occurred there in years past. And it can also, um, you know, it helps sort of with shared experiences and respect and understanding of, of one another's heritage. We also have extensive newspaper subscriptions that can connect families to current events and diverse points of view. And of course, um, newcomer multilingual families may find this resource of particular in interest because they can access newspapers in languages from over 100 countries. Style the story. I love this. And a lot of people aren't always aware of it. This is a great low tech option for families who want to reduce screen time. Um, kids can phone and listen to a story 24 seven, any time of the year. It's available in 16 languages and we have stories for kids ages seven and under and also kids eight to 12 years of age. This is a very valuable tool for uh, that supports early literacy and those listening skills too. It helps develop that. So families can call during breakfast or listen to a story before bedtime if they want. Tons of online programs. Go to tpl.ca slash programs. We have um, online programs are available for all ages. This doesn't cost anything either. Um, most of our online programs are offered on Crowdcast and all you need is an email address to register. And you can check out what we've got coming up at tpl.ca programs. So we have things like a monthly virtual book club. We have after school club programs for young kids. Um, we have puppet shows, science programs, lots of stuff. You can also watch videos on our YouTube channel. Um, and these are available 24 seven. And the story time at home videos, for example, are short videos because we didn't want to make them too long for that younger audience, but uh, they're great. They have sort of some ready for reading tips as well as reading books aloud. And we have STEM programs. I just encourage you to check that out. And these are just some um, upcoming things. We have after school clubs I mentioned. We have a monthly book club, puppet shows, if you can't watch it live, most of our programs are available for replay. And these are just some upcoming ones. We have Ready for Reading Story Times live, ones taking place as we speak, actually. And we also have uh, Symphony Story Time with the TSO. So we're combining music as well as um, um, music and stories. We have a bunch of Summer Wonder and TD Summer Reading Club programs coming up. We have a Reading for Pride book talk for children and families. And we also have a parent engagement um, session coming up about children's mental health. So that's a parent workshop. That's coming up at the end of June. I, it's not posted yet, but keep an eye out for it if you visit our website. So I've talked a lot about Toronto Public Library only because we do have so many amazing resources, but I also want to talk to you a little bit about other online resources that can help support early readers. So these are sites that have good information as well as sites that offer literacy activities and, and programs. This Government of Ontario one, Learn at Home, Kindergarten to Grade 3, please look at that one. It's fabulous. It's got so many resources on it. They're designed to help students from kindergarten all the way up to grade 3. It's to help them learn at home independently or with a parent or guardian. It's really like a passport to all kinds of high quality online resources. Um, I was hoping to demonstrate that one too at the end. We have 10 minutes left. Okay, all right. So, um, and I'm almost done. <laughs> You'll be glad to know. So Unite for Literacy, this is a great, and actually I found this one on the Learn at Home kindergarten site. 
And this one, you can click on books and you hear the audio and the pages are flipping. But I thought this was really, I, I really like this one and I wanted to demonstrate this one. There's over 400 original picture books um, and they provide audio narrations in over 40 languages. So that's a really great source. Audible, there's free Audible stories for kids to listen to. And then I was crushed to see that it's ending on June 30th, but, but please take advantage of it while it's still there. These are free stories. You can see at the bottom here, I started listening to Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. That's one of my favorite stories that I wanted to listen to. But uh, this is another great resource. And again, this was on that uh, government website, Learn at Home. These are some of my favorite online resources and literacy supports. ABC Canada. Um, ABC Canada celebrates Family Literacy Day every year on January 27th, and Toronto Public Library in the past has been supporting that initiative in the month of January. There's also the Canadian Children's Literacy Foundation. Tons of information there. Reading Rockets, a lot of you may know of that one already, but I love that site. It's, it's a US one, but it's so amazing. And then Caring for Kids, the Canadian Pediatric Society. Um, they have some information about early literacy as well as other health, um, um, health information for new parents, parents with young children. And I was going to show you one of those. I mentioned Jayberry. My library friends out there already know this one, but I think this is a wonderful resource, not only for librarians and ECE workers, but for parents and caregivers too, because there's a lot of great ideas of songs and rhymes and books that can be shared with young kids and showing you how to share those things with them as well. So I, it's a wonderful resource. This is uh, two librarians that started this website. And then Storyline Online have features. Um, celebrities, or well, I'm not going to say celebrities, but uh, well, actors reading children's books. And actually, a lot of them are quite good. There's Arnie again, um, but this one's quite funny. I enjoyed that one. Um, but the readers include people like Oprah Winfrey, Chris Pine, Kristen Bell, Betty White. Uh, <clears throat> they're available 24 hours a day. And then my last one, zero to three. I love this site. Um, it's one of my favorite early learning and early development websites. It focuses on those first three years of life that we talked about at the beginning. They want to ensure that all babies and toddlers have a strong start in life. And they've got a lot of really good uh, information, supports and resources there. So I encourage you to visit there. Okay, and that's the, <laughs> that's the formal part of it. I'm so sorry, there's so much to talk about. Um, is there something in particular that anybody wants me to look at? We've we got about seven, seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have seven minutes. I guess there's no voting, right? That can take place on this platform. <laughs> yeah. I think if people either want to unmute or just stick things in the chat, can you see the chat, Patty? Uh, no, not at the moment. Sorry. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to, can you guys see, um, Yep. Google. Okay. I'll just take a look at the chat now. Oh, caring for kids. Okay. Yeah, stuck on novelists. Okay, I'm just sort of catching up on these. So oh, yes, yeah, let's go to the caring for kids. Um, let's see. Can I? Oh, okay. Sorry, I have it already. That's the learn at home. We're getting there. Oops, I just did something again. I think you have to share your screen again. Okay. No, oh, why is the prompt? The prompt's not coming up now. Um, why is that? Do you see at the bottom of your screen? There yep. should okay. say, yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Robin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No problem. <laughs> All right. Everybody should be able to see that now. Yep. Great. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to.
So this is, um, sorry, I have to move things around on my screen, but um, so read, speak, sing to your child, how parents can promote literacy from birth. This is great information. Um, and of course they have links to baby's brain development. They talk about that back and forth serve and return um, and just sort of how it helps with that brain development with parents and, and children literacy and language, speak and tell stories. It gives some great ideas on just sort of what parents can do. Sharing books, sharing books is so important. Like it's not only just sharing the book, but it's also spending that time together and bonding as well. And I know, I, I mean, I was working full time and when my kids were little, some nights I'd come home and I think, oh, I'm so tired, I don't wanna do stories, but we always did. And I was always so happy that we did because it was just such a wonderful family experience. Um, and then singing, I mean, singing helps develop all of those pre-literacy skills. And then this is a great chart kind of, and again, these are developmental like guidelines, but just it talks about um, milestones and what parents can do to help develop those certain things at, at the different ages. So Mandy is saying um, they're looking for medical literature for children. So yeah. comics or stories about doctors or hospitals. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like stories about doctors or hospitals. Yes. Okay. So um, it, the library has those kind of things for sure. Um, because we have what's called a parent's collection that helps uh, kids deal with certain um, issues, such as if there's a death in the family or if they have to go to a doctor and, aren't familiar with it. So there's certainly that, we call that uh, bibliotherapy. Um, but yes, for sure there would be, um, so you're looking for that on here. It does provide a lot of medical information. Um, I'm not sure that I've seen any book lists on this site, however, but um, I did, th those will be there. And even just a simple Google search um, can help you with things like that. Uh, just, you know, children's picture books, and maybe whatever the medical um, situation is or whatever it is that you want to look up. Um, so, and then we have one more question. We're at 1017, so maybe this is the uh, final question. So Gail is asking, how Canopy is different from Hoopla? Okay, so um, I can show you. So here's Canopy Kids. So Canopy has um, lots of great videos and I think they have one of them has also comics. Um, Canopy has a lot of um, books based on sorry videos based on books that you can watch. Um, there's one of my favorites and I'm just going to go back to I think Hoopla. I'm just going to get rid of that. Right, let's go. I had signed in already. Um, okay, maybe I'm still signed in. So, and Hoopla has a kids mode. So as well as adult materials. So Hoopla, you can see what I recently borrowed and what's recommended for me. So movies, music and comics and television. So you, you kind of got to experiment with them both um, and just sort of, because there's different things that are offered on them. And that's sort of back to, whoops. And that's our main uh, page. That's, uh, if anybody's interested in the digital access card, that's where you can find information on how to look at that. Okay, so we are at time. Um, so 